Guys, welcome to another episode of Wrench. On this show, we are taking the wide body flares from this 1967 Porsche 911 and shrinking them back to the original OEM narrow body goodness. What's up dudes, welcome back. Behind me is this 1967 Porsche 911. And somebody put some wide body RSR flares on it and they were long wheelbase. Unfortunately, this car is short wheelbase. So the flares sat wrong on the car. The wheels looked like they were too far up. It was a very wonky install. I have since cut the wide body flares off and I'm putting the original narrow body OEM fenders on so this client can have a hot rod, narrow bodied, cool 911R kind of car. Now I asked you guys last episode, what should I call this project? And cup of tea on YouTube, thank you. Welcome to Fat Boy Slim. How great is Fat Boy Slim? I wish by the way, I was able to do these episodes a little more frequently, but apparently I've moved to Seattle because we've had our 12th atmospheric river since December. And what that means is just buckets and buckets and buckets of rain, which disrupts my whole world. My garage leaks, it gets windy, it's a whole thing. We've actually had more rain this winter than Seattle. And this has been the second rainiest season in the history of recording rainy seasons in California, I think since like 1923. So it's been really awful. It's just raining, 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 rainy. So I haven't been able to even work on the cars, much less film them because as you can see, I'm standing outside right now with the garage behind me. Nevertheless, I have already done the driver's side of this unflare job. I'll show you that right now and then I'll show you how we're going to do the passenger side, which is gonna be a little trickier because there's an oil tank in the way. Okay, as you can see, this side has been tacked on and it looks great. It's super smooth, like there's really no gap. I was really, really careful in making sure that these panels were aligned and there wasn't a gap. I also really took my time and you know, I, I tapped, I did a little bit of hammer and dolly work after I would weld. So this panel right now feels really smooth. It's going to need very minimal body filler and I intend to keep it that way. Unfortunately, this car has already had a bunch of body filler. Like there's a bunch of weird stuff going on up here. There's a dent down here in the body work that has nothing to do with me. And I'm gonna try to see if I can fix it as best I can, but it's hard to get in there. This thing went on really well. And I'm basically going to show you how I did it. And then uh, you guys hopefully will have the knowledge to do it yourselves. I actually have a whole nother video of doing flares on a uh, red 911. So if it's something you guys are interested in, absolutely check that video out and you can see how to do this. But we're gonna go over it today. So let's go. Fortunately, this project doesn't require a ton in terms of like specialty tools. I mean, you need a welder obviously. Otherwise it's just a, you know, angle grinder and things like that. What I've done already is I've laid the outer fender uh, on the car with a couple of tech screws. I'm gonna show you what I did on the inside. So you can see I've used a little bit of primer and just put it on the inside so I can see exactly where the inner fender is. So I'm basically just gonna cut right now a couple of inches and get this thing trimmed up so it fits just on the outside of the car. So now that I've got both panels roughly fit, now it's time to measure like 900 times and make sure the fore and aft of the panel is exactly where it needs to be. Fortunately, I have measurements from the jack point to the hole of the flare, and then from the front of the, I'll show you here, and then from the front of the tail light right here until the wheel opening. So I got those from another guy who's got a short wheelbase car. And uh, I'm gonna measure those, make sure they're close. And then I'll show you what we do next. Spot on. So the next challenge is there's a lip here for the gasket that isn't able to go where it needs to go. So the flare is actually like a quarter inch too low right now. 
So what I got to do here is just cut this and I've got to be really careful of the oil tank. I think I'm going to try to uh, loosen the bolts on the oil tank and lower it and see if I can just get it out of the way. All right, change of plans. For whatever reason, I didn't consider all the stuff that's in the engine compartment on the oil tank, like the filler neck, the oil filter, and a bunch of hoses. I don't know why, it just brain farted. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna try to be really careful as I cut the inner fender away. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be really careful. That's the update, I'm gonna be really careful. All right, hopefully you guys can see this, but what I've done is taken out a little notch here. I've got this lip that needs to sit flush. So this way I can actually adjust the panel so the thing sits flush. At this point, I can actually take an, an accurate measurement from this corner to the inside corner of the flare, which I know to be 370 millimeters. And now that it sits right, I can double check. And I'm at, I mean, just dead ass nuts, 370 millimeters. Let me just double check that again. Yeah, I'm, I'm spot on right here. Not to complain, but here we go again. So I've underestimated the impact of not being able to clamp the back here due to this oil tank being in the way. So what I think I'm gonna do is drill a hole just above where I need to go and uh, put a Clico in there so I can get the thing like exactly where it needs to be. The bottom line is you can't measure enough. Like you cannot double check your measurements and your fit enough. You've got, you know, obviously you're gonna weld this thing on, it's gonna be there forever. So I'm looking at like lines, how the fender's lining up. I'm looking at profile this way. I'm looking at this, the, the yaw of the fender. I'm looking at all this stuff to try to make sure it like is d as dialed as it can be. Uh, this thing's actually kind of dented as well. These panels aren't in great shape, but I'm gonna get one in there and make sure that my measurements are solid. I'll tack it in the back, I'll tack it in the front, and then I'll work my way back to front and I'll eventually cut that front tack off um, so that the whole fender like kind of slides into itself. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get there, but. All right, I'm feeling really good about how this thing is on the car. Measurements are spot on. I've got it clamped really nicely. I've got a nice straight line here. It's always nice to get this line and make sure that it's dialed. So this one looks really good. So um, I'm gonna scrape off the undercoating on the inside of the flare. Probably gonna pull the panel off real quick. Scrape the undercoating off, give it a quick little sand because it'll weld better when there's not undercoating kind of burning on the backside. And, uh, and then we're pretty good to, to tack and start working our way up. All right, it is the next day. I am Really happy, hi Tippy. hi Ben. I'm really happy with how this thing is fitting right now. Feeling good about the overall fitment. I got a goed in, so at this point, I, what I usually do is just start tacking. The panel is obviously sitting on top of the body right now, so as you cut around it, you just end up pushing it in so it becomes flush. So what I do here is, when you cut it with a, a blade, you know, one of these cutting wheels, you get like this really nice you know, one millimeter, two millimeter gap that happens between your panel and uh, between your new piece. So at that point then, all you gotta do is just make sure 
that you're flush, that it flushes up nicely. And I do that on each side here so that it just blends into the panel. And I go all the way around with tack, 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 tack. Once it's all tacked, I grind them down and then, then it's just a matter of finishing. You just finish the thing up, which is basically where the other panel is on the other side right now. All right, we are tacked. Whole fender is completely tacked now. I feel really good about uh, how it is. It's, it's level, it's really good. What I'm gonna do now is just take my angle grinder with a flap disc and just kind of knock down these welds. And then I'm gonna go in with my flat little air sander and flatten it out. And I'm gonna leave that for tonight. All right, here it is in all its glory. Really nice and smooth here. Way hard to show this, by the way, on camera, but it is, it is totally even and smooth. I might cut this one down here and try to do a little bit more work. The problem is, is that this panel is dented right here. So I've got a little bit of a lip right there. This could be just filler, but otherwise, man, I didn't get a lot of heat into this thing. There's literally zero warpage. All right, so behind me, Fat Boy is at least halfway slim. Both non-flares are back on the car, and they're great. At this point, 75, 80% of the job is done. Most of the work on doing flares, or in this case, unflares, is getting your measurements right. And then as you're tacking, making sure the surfaces are dead flat as you go. At this point, all I really have to do is fully weld the seams of both flares. How I'm gonna do it is basically, I'm gonna put my next welds on top of the previous welds, kind of like halfway, uh, halfway in the gap and halfway on the previous weld. Hi, Tippy. This is Tippy. Tippy's visiting. And I'm actually gonna switch back and forth side to side on the car because I don't wanna put any heat. In fact, I'm gonna keep one glove on and one glove off because I wanna be able to touch the panel of the car and make sure there's not too much heat going on there. All right, I'm about an hour into the grinding process, and this is where I am on each side. It's actually coming out really well. I'm super excited about it. By the way, I'm basically using two tools to grind the car. I've got a 40 grit flap disc on an angle grinder. For that, I'm going all the way over the entire weld, so I'm not trying to focus on one spot at all. I've also got a 40 grit disc, a three inch 40 grit disc on my little quarter inch angle grinder. And for this one, I'm, I'm getting a little more specific. I'm really trying to keep it as flat as I can because I don't want to dig into the weld. I'm trying to keep it a little bit flat so the panel itself is smooth. You know, this whole thing's gonna have to get covered in fiberglass filler anyway. That's what I do after this process. So it doesn't have to be totally perfect, but I'm trying to make it as perfect as I can. So for this final phase, I've got the leading edge and the trailing edge of the flare to do on each one of them. I've got a couple spots that don't line up exactly as I'd like them to. So I'm actually gonna cut it with the cutting wheel. Uh, as I go through this process of welding each side. 
and again, totally focus on trying to get each panel totally level with each other because that just makes this part so much easier. All right, some progress. I've got this side fully welded. I've just done a quick initial grind and a quick bit of hammer and dolly. And I'll show you some of the issue. You see here how you can see that this feels like a little undercut. It's almost like a little divot. That's from the heat. So as you butt weld this thing, it, it shrinks this metal and you get this like almost little V. So what I do, cause you can't really get a hammer on the inside of this. I kind of go dolly to dolly. So I'll put a dolly on the outside and I'll have a dolly on the inside. This is the hammer and another dolly as the dolly and try to get this V to go away so that I can make this panel as smooth as possible. I'm putting a little guide coat on here just so I have a better idea of the smoothness or flatness of these welds. So you guys probably notice I'm getting really micro about the bodywork on this and that's because there's no flare. When you have a little bit of flare, you've got like a little bit of room to, to put some filler. Well, since there's no flare here, I'm gonna try to keep this thing as light on filler as humanly possible. So I'm really kind of nerding out and trying to make sure it's as smooth as I can get it with like hammer and dolly before I put a thin layer of fiberglass filler on it. As you can see, it's pretty easy for me to obsess and just go and go and go and go. However, ultimately, every one of these is gonna need some kind of filler I mean, unless you're doing some full concours restoration, you're gonna have a little bit of line. It doesn't really make that much sense to go absolutely invisible, because you gotta put filler on it anyway. I just make sure I get out the big stuff so it's a lot easier to sand. But right now, I'm going to put some fiberglass filler on this thing, and we are going to call these unflares done. Okay, guys, that is it. I've got one thin layer of fiberglass filler over the welds. I'll do a very quick block sand on that and this baby will be done. Now this whole car is gonna basically end up a 911R clone. So front end still has to be done, but the rear now is nice and slim. Fat boy is indeed slim. Well dudes, that's gonna wrap up this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me while I made fat boy into fat boy slim. I uh, got some blasphemy stuff coming up, so stay tuned. If you are new to the channel, thanks for subscribing. Thanks for hanging out, and we will see you next time.